Hi, I'm Sam and welcome today to Paul Stevens 911. We're here to drive quite an interesting car that they've just finished working on and it's about to go to the customer pretty soon. But over here, we have Paul who's going to talk me through the car. Hello, hello. Morning, Sam. Good morning, good morning. So what have we got here? So this is known as a 993R. It's our latest model. So, so it's... this, if, if 993 was looked at now and gone for sort of like an RS... Style, yeah, or... our, well, our thing's never so. R is is uh, relating right back to our very first car, okay. which was the three hundred R, which we started developing in two thousand and two, and that was based on the nine six four. Okay, uh, it was a backdated car then, um, but the concept similar because we have it was stripped out, lightweight, but not to compete with the RS because the RS is quite a you know it's a very good car, but a raw car. Yeah, um, and was track focused, and all of our cars since that time have been road cars so yeah. they're not track cars uh, you could take it on the circuit of course but uh, primarily it's it's been developed as a road car so our, our program has always been about uh, minim, you know offering a, a minimal uh, styling experience but with increased performance and drivability so 993 is the latest um, although we've been backdating cars for all those years I feel it's probably the time to to, to embrace the, the the original car. You know, 993 was a was a lovely shaped car and a, technically a, a, a much more advanced car over 964, for example. Ooh. Um, and we, and like since uh, Porsche have you know been producing water cooled cars, there's obviously some technologies that we've been able to build into this car uh, that, that correlate from from the later cars. Yeah. So I know when your process normally starts with a conversation with a customer, generally. Yeah. Uh, yeah. About what they want. Yeah. And what did they, what's this car going to get used for? What's the it's like tailored? Okay. Is it use it much on track or? No. So this this car was created with a client following a, a, a brief, and and that was to to be able to drive it daily. That was a, that was important. Yeah. And to be able to do long distance uh, European trips because he does historic motorsport uh, uh, racing. So to be able to go off down to recall somewhere like that and and. Be able to drive in comfort, but uh, you know, have an experience that's uh, more involving than perhaps uh, a modern car might offer. Because obviously they're very technically capable and quick, and everything that yeah. we know, and they're also big. Uh, so that the comp, you know, you never think 20 years ago uh, as a 993 is a compact car, but compared to a modern car, it definitely is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know, it's 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 also you know, from a chassis point of view, it's a good starting point for us. The brief was take a 993 from the client and try and dial up each area by about 25%. Let's okay. see what we can do. That was okay. the challenge. Now, clearly that's not possible in every, in every area, but we, we've literally revisited the whole car and yeah. tried to improve it all the way through little bits everywhere. Yeah. So we started with, with the bare shell, which we stripped. And like a race car, if you've got a solid shell, so we seem, you know, you've got a place to, to work from. So we seam welded the shell and uh, fitted an integral roll cage, which was welded in, uh, tied in the front as well. So we've got a good solid starting point yeah. uh, to, to, to build from. Uh, we then looked at how we could save weight in the car without being as stripped out as a say an M003 Club Sport, which is yeah. really stripped out, an RS. It was never meant to replace that car or be an alternative to that type of car. It's more of a road car, but it did need to be lighter than a standard 993, which is 1370. So what's this? Uh, so this wet is 1220. Oh, okay. Um, we've yeah. weighed it on three different sets of uh, scales now. It's 1190 dry. Okay. 1220 with oil. 1220 with fuel and oil. Where did most of the, where were the big things for weight? Uh, so we chipped away, um, I'll start where we save weight and then, and then it all build, yeah, yeah, it builds yeah, yeah. as it goes along. So the roof was the start, taking out the sunroof, yeah, um, de-seaming it. I got this idea originally from the 959, we've used it on other models to be honest, but the 959 had that smooth yeah. uh, yeah, roof line and it cleans it up, but it also allows us to put on a thinner roof skin, thinner glass. Right. So from, from, only from the, you know, from the Porsche RS program, but again, no, rear wipe has gone, all, the, all of that's gone. We've got no um, wiring in the top of the roof at all because as I'll show you in a minute, all the courtesy lights and everything are in the footwell. Okay. So it meant we didn't have to run any wiring up to the top of the car so we could 
delete all of that. Yeah. Um, same for the doors. Uh, we run a, a manual winder system. So no electric windows. I even didn't want any grab handles on the car. Uh, and I agonized over this for a while because obviously you've got the go-to grab handle yeah. and then we designed various different things around that. Uh, and it wasn't working for me personally. So I How actually- How shut the door? From here. Ah, nice. So if you look over there, it's probably clearer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Less is more is always our thing. And one of my road cars is actually a little Lotus Elise S1. Okay, yeah. Just because it, keeps me embodies that it keeps me sound in terms of what we're trying to achieve yeah every time we build something and i got in it one morning shut the door and thought yeah remember that that's where that idea came from being honest we make all our own panels yeah so pulling out all of the interior of the original car the carpets are quite heavy all the sound insulation is quite heavy the dashboard we, we took out all the lower dashboard if you look at a 993 Club Sport, it's just got a simple knee roll, so we were able to reproduce a lighter version of that. Yeah. We make all our own panels, so lighter version of the dash top, lighter version of the centre panel. We did the airbag delete on this one because you can on M003. And we incorporated an open glove box, a bit like you might see in the early motorsport cars like the, the RS, etc. And cleaned up the dashboard around here. As you may remember, Sam, the later air-cooled cars, every time they thought of something new, they stuck another switch in <laughs> to, to operate it, and they were everywhere. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. for me, it was, we must clear that up. No audio in the car, so that was deleted. Okay. And uh, so there's nothing, there's no wiring in the doors at all uh, that, 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 that we need, you see, so. And then um, something you pointed out earlier on a different car, if you look under most 911s, pretty much all 911s, there's cables galore and stuff yeah, under that, here, isn't it? That was a big thing, of, Mind, you know, the, the 903 and 96, or anything air-cooled, basically, yeah, you look underneath the dashboard and it's all a bit, you yeah. know, everything's hanging out and that's just how they were, you know, things have moved on now. So for me, I wanted to create a, you know, a, a more finished area. Mm -hmm. So we've got the, the, the ducting for the uh, footwell still in there. We've got under, you know, you can see courtesy lighting here, but also a little place for your feet to go so, so you don't, you know, don't hit this. Yeah. Um, and then we've got our lightweight panel system that we, we use and we've fitted that in. So that even though we've got a full panel system front and rear in this car, um, we're actually carrying less weight than, than what we took out. Okay, yeah. Because uh, they're, light, they're light panels, they are trimmed. There's no fidgeting or clonky or anything in these panels. Uh, we work really hard on this because I've, got, I've just got a very simple theory. If you've if you're changing something that a manufacturer like Porsche has created, then it's at least got to work as well, if yeah. not better, hopefully. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so, and you know, they build some awesome cars and you, you know, and they're very good at what they do. So changing things has to be considered very carefully. Um, the seats are carbon fiber. The fabric we chose as a, to sort of correlate with that as well, as a, just, it's a, um, a woven leather, um, nice. which, we, which we got from Italy. And then we tied in, the, there was a dark red, uh, accent just to go for the belts and yeah, the, nice. the marker and the rev counter. This is still in development form, this car, so that isn't the final rev counter, but my, the design is there. So our, our thing is to have the speedo and the rev counter going around, so the, the increments at the top, ah, so okay. when you look through the wheel, you can see what's going on. Yeah. Um, this actual engine revs to more than that, but I'll talk to you about that in a minute, and this, this will be changed for the production. Oh, I like that, because Normally, if you do that, like on my, on my ST, for example, people just spin the dial, yeah, yeah. and then the whole dial is yeah, like yeah. not aligned. Whereas, yeah. okay, you've gone to the full extent yeah. with that. So, move, keeping on with the lightweight theme, everything in all the switch gear is aluminium. Um, oh, nice! And, and machined aluminium, good. but this needed to at least be as light as what we took out in the plastic. <laughs> so, if you run your hand down the inside, it's all machined out gently oh, at the okay. back. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But with the little finger pads that you yeah. can still use. So the switches here are aluminium. All the heater controls are light aluminium, uh, air conditioning. But so everything you touch, your window winders, all aluminium. Um, your key, which I'll show you in a minute, um, and your um, lights, all all in aluminium. But and even these are aluminium. Yeah, that all feels, and it's got that because it's it's slightly warm, so it's got that nice cool touch to it. Yeah, it's not immediately obvious, and that's that was deliberate. I know you, clearly you can make. Aluminium look very obvious, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the whole point here is to tone it down, so so you, you know, you you, you don't necessarily notice it. Really important to have a good driving position. So again, 
mounted straight to the body, the foot plate, everything else. Not, nothing that you wouldn't do in a race car, to be fair, but it had to aesthetically look nice. Um, and a cleaner centre tunnel, lower centre tunnel, so you can see through a bit like the older cars, you know. Yeah, because uh, yeah, normally this would, would this sort of go kind of like that. Yeah, it's got, it's got another panel that goes in there and it's all built up. So we, we redesigned that so it's shorter, lowered the, the, the tunnel panel there and just kept it simple going through to the back. The roll cage is, is welded in, but I just wanted that to just disappear into the car if that makes sense. And yeah. so we have finishers and bracket just to, just to make it all disappear, really. Can you sit back there? So if you didn't have a roll cage, and we've had already had inquiries about a touring version. Okay. Uh, the seats were always designed to, to have a, so we've got the seat pans. In this particular one, it's just for crash helmets and there's gonna be a luggage yeah. net when it's finished yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. matches the doors. Uh, How will that go? Will that sort of go kind of over the top? Yeah, it'll come, come over, be mounted from here across the top. So you literally like this. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 that's nice. Stop everything um, moving Sorry, around. everything flying around. But yeah, clearly if you had a touring version, we would be able to put seat backs on. Yeah. So you can have children in there. And we've already incorporated that to take, so if you want to put seat belts in and everything, the fixing point's are already there. That shut very, very nicely. <laughs> Porsche ping, we call it. <laughs> Yeah, very important. Um, the, um, just moving on to here, this is still in development, this, this lid, uh, so. I quite like, I like how you can, I guess it depends on where the car's gonna live and whatnot, but I like how you can see all the, the good stuff through it. Yeah, well that, that was uh, thought about as well, if you, if you know what I mean, because it's nice to just look through, it's a little bit intriguing, isn't it, mm. what, what's going on? And these two grills come from the uh, 993 C2S, although they've never been fitted in a, in a lid like this, that, that was our thing. And, you know, they had to fit and work. And we originally were working with a ducktail for this car, but um, <clears throat> to be honest, we, 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 it's been done and uh, the ducktail is a, as a, is a item that's yeah. fitted to nearly every modified 911. And we look towards the later cars for some inspiration. Yeah. So it's not finalized this, but, um, when, when, but the air comes down and, and drops down in, into here and when, when, when it is, productionized it will have a ram air effect straight oh, into the okay. air cleaner yeah, yeah, yeah. Like RS and stuff that's, like that. that's that? it that's, that's where cute. it's coming from not quite finished that part yet and the same for the air cooling and then this will be one piece it's currently two piece so yeah. please, please ignore it'll be, this. it'll be a bit smoother and whatnot. yeah yeah it's gonna that it's there in its design but in terms of its uh and is this a, a four were they <coughs> or is it oh, i don't know my 993s normally on a on other 911s if you've got the big light panel sort of across the back, it would make it a four, but yeah. is that not the case? So, no, 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 it is, you are correct. So a Carrera 2 would have the orange yep. or amber lighting, and we just thought it would clean it up. Other, you know, some people put bespoke lights in, but we, again, going back to trying to make it look and feel like a, a, a slightly modified 993 was always, yeah, yeah. The, was always the thing. And the same with the rear bumper, the, or, bumpers both front and rear these are our own design they're clearly inspired by the original car but um, you'll see with a lot of other conversions people use the gt3 back box and they have the pipes coming out the middle yeah. that was never an option for this car because um, we wanted it's got a little rear diffuser yeah, on it yeah i noticed that yeah um, obviously a place for your towing eye, you have to think yeah. about these things because if it does break down. And it's a deeper bumper than the, the original C2 bumper, we'll, we'll have a look inside. But to get the exhaust pipes mounted out, yeah. was to, it gave it a bit of a width, so we didn't want the car to be wide body. That's, it's all about keeping it, narrow. Keep, keeping it narrow. But if you look at the car from behind, it's, it's still got that Coke bottle 993 shape, but not too, not too, not yeah. too big, but the, the pipes, being mounted to either side, accentuate what, that. What size, uh, what size wheels? So they're from the uh, GT3 RS, okay. uh, Gen 2. Uh, so, um, but obviously one color. Yeah. And then we have our own center caps uh, to fit the Porsche centers. Yeah. So fundamentally what we needed was a wheel that went under that narrow shell car with the, with the maximum width we could get. Yeah. And you, can, that you could have split rims and whatever and mag rims. But again, we felt for this project, we wanted to embrace what, you know, a Porsche type wheel rather than an aftermarket wheel, hence use, using this wheel. And, and it fits and works for us as a from a technical perspective. 
Can we have a look in the engine bay? Yeah, sure. And just do, just quickly front. talk about the brakes. They're, yeah. they're big reds, basically. So again, not trying to reinvent the wheel here. I mean, you know, people say, oh, what about carbon this and what? It's a road car. So these are from a turbo? Yeah, they, they, they work. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, plenty of brakes. So, um, <clears throat> and that is, that's one of your things is like not going, if the brakes work, don't put bigger brakes on. Yeah, it's it needed, it's and... got quite a bit more power than standard. So clearly it needed to be more than standard, but, yeah. but you know, adding weight for the sake of adding weight. So yeah, not the final finished item for this. Uh, you've seen some of our other work, Sam, and it's, it's better than this, okay. But in here, we're pretty much finished. So we've got our own fan shroud here that we've designed and just, just to improve the air cooling. And to, obviously all the Porsche heating has gone. So we, we've made our own piping here. Yeah. That's just a temporary air cleaner. I've told you about what we're doing here. And we're running in individual throttle bodies here. This is from 996 GT3. Mesker engine, which you know is familiar to, to all air-cooled 911s and water-cooled 996, right. 997. Yeah. So we're able to use more modern components inside. Okay. So we've got 997 GT3 crank, 997 GT3 oil pump, we've got lighter rods, we've got RSR pistons. We've, we've actually got our own design of camshaft, which we've, we've worked with with an English manufacturer and we've got solid lifters. So the brief for this particular car, and that's what I was saying about the rev counter yeah. changing, was for a car that tractable, not necessarily massive on power, but to have a characteristic of a traditional 911 engine, which builds yeah. and builds and gives, yeah. you, gives you lots of revs. So we've restricted this for now to 7.6, because peak power's yeah. at 7.4, same as a GT3 Mark II, yeah. 906, but it will ping round to 8.5 if you want it to. Nice. So, so we're, we're 330 here at the moment, mm -hmm. um, and we've got the same torque as a GT3 uh, Mark II, or power, power to weight, yeah, brake horsepower per ton. So, cool. yeah, we do a 360, there's a 360, we've done another engine, which is 360 horsepower, uh, so more power, obviously. Yeah. Um, this is the better road engine, Right. Being, just being honest. It just works better. Yeah. It just works better as a road car. And it seems to suit, you know, that going back to that less is more, sometimes, you, you know, the angry thing that's not always wanting to respond low down, et cetera, et cetera. So th this is a 3.8. We can do a four litre if somebody wants, but Mark's thing, you know, the customer was always, you know, road. a road car and he, he wanted the thing to rev and feel more, you know, perhaps cool. Porsche-like rather than, you know, four litre gives you torque and loads of low down grunt, doesn't it? So we just did some little things in here while we were here and being brutally honest, he's probably definitely having to say, yeah, having to say well, <laughs> an aluminium oil filler and power steering cap, you right. know, that they were plastic and tin. So we haven't saved anything there and the oil catch hang up there nice in aluminium. But they're, they're, they're trinkets, you know, yep. we're talking a, a gram or two, aren't we really? So mirrors again, these were, we use these mirrors. The, these are actually adjustable by hand, you know, you can move them around and whatever. Okay. Yep. They're quite bulletproof, you know, you can just do that <laughs> with them. But they're inspired by the um, 90s race cars, you know, the, the cup cars. Yeah. And they're 0.25 of a, Kilogram, so they're, they're light, you know, they're no, yeah, uh, more, and still, we haven't got the, yeah, a bit more aero, keep, keeping in with the slim design of the car, and, and obviously, no architecture here, no mirrors, electric, mirror, another yeah. weight saving, yeah, so, so, so all of that as well. I'll just uh, show you this as well oh, while yeah. we're here. So, it's got an aluminium key which you uh, use, and then um, somebody dropped it the other day, look, <laughs> put a chip on it, which is irritating. Um, but this was a, a, a scan of the actual car. And then, cool. and then we did it. Did the remote put the buttons in the top, so lock, unlock, etc., etc. Is this 3D printed or something? Yeah, yeah. It's a 3D design and printed and just finished. So that's cool. So uh, yeah, just a, just a, and uh, yeah. So you use it to open the the car and the front, like the luggage compartment here. Um, and so this this pops up, and this is your Porsche RS bonnet prop. Uh, to be honest, nice. uh, we, we've just got to do a. I'm going to improve this because it's just catching here. So these are little things. Yeah, this is this yeah. is still development. Um, aluminium bonnet. So we're not we're not carbon in this car. Again, Porsche in period wouldn't have been splashing the carbon around on their road cars. Yeah. So it's not. I, I appreciate people like carbon, and and it's definitely the the modern way of doing things. But for us, we were trying to embrace the era rather yeah. than. You know. And you showed me a 
another 993 inside, which I'll cut to a clip to you of now, but for the people that don't know, a 993 normally has a, a sort of carpet interior. So it's just some carpet that's arranged over the stuff and you yep. kind of fit it all in and whatnot. Well, you've yep. gone to a, a bit of a different level here. Yeah. And all bespoke so what, proper panels. So, yeah, the, the idea here was to clean it up and make it feel more modern, <clears throat> primarily. Um, and we did. We knew we didn't, with, because of the type of suspension, which I'll go on yeah. to in a minute, we didn't need to be getting access to the dampers and things to adjust them. Right. It's all done in the car. So you, you, we didn't need that, and we didn't need to access to the brace, you know, strut brace. And so why expose all of that yeah. in a road car? It's a road car. Yeah. You wouldn't keep have it, it in, you know, keep it clean. So we've actually covered all of that up. Um, it's all there. Um, and then just kept this very clean. The fuse box is what you need to get to. So we made a leather, two little leather straps and you just lift yeah. that off and you can get to your fuses. That's what you need to do there. Battery and stuff like that? Yeah, down here. So you just take this out. Okay, yeah. And under here is your battery. You've got, you can have your CTEC charger on there, which this yeah. one's got. Tool roll. Uh, we've lost a spare wheel because we can't get a, a big spare wheel in here. Uh, but we've got our electric air conditioning down here. So instead of having the big compressor up the front, yeah. we've got an, an electric compressor down the front here. Um, jack, bottle, a get your home. it's a get your home situation. Yeah. Um, but even things like, you know, if you ever want to take the battery out, we've, we've made a provision just so you put the socket okay. down and get it out easily. Because you have to, it has, anything you do has to work. Yes. <laughs> it's it's all very well designing it to look nice, but it has to work. So yeah, simple clean, uh, that, that was the thing. Little pocket, they normally have a pocket here, so we sort of did our own version okay, of that. Yeah. Lights? Yeah, just a, a more modern uh, lighting system inside but with original glass, to be honest, Sam. Uh, again, I know you can get, and we've used, modern looking lights in, in the cars, but I, we just felt for this project, uh, keep it, it looking yeah. Porsche, you know? The front end has to work as well, and we want, I didn't want that deep bottom that you get on, a say, an S model with a wide yeah. body, you know, you've got a much deeper sill, so I wanted to keep the narrow C2 sill line but so we brought that through into the front of the car and the rear if you have a look with the styling lines all of those ducts have a function that was that's our thing they need to work they yep. don't they just don't want holes in the car so we've got the oil coolers in there cooling for the air conditioning brake ducting obviously and we've got our own wheel arch liners because when you're drawing air in through here mm. obviously it needs to exit out through the oil cooler so we've got our own ducts and wheel arch liners in there as well and it all ties in with the aero underneath the car but the concept really was trying to keep it clean yeah. and simple and functional. So everything we've done has a, has a, a purpose. purpose and a reason. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I, I like it. And then the thing with the, the panels that I, I didn't realize is I knew you'd done bespoke panels as seen on the, the other car before, but inside you had some of the ones that had been done. And basically all the panels arrive and then they get fitted to each car. So each car, the interior, is adjusted to fit that car, so therefore it fits very well, because none of them are the same, they're all a bit different. Well, that was that's true, and we, we do use a, a, a glass fibre for that, uh, as opposed to carbon, because uh, we can fit and shape and just, yeah. you know, if you get a moulding, it's, it's fundamentally, it can be pretty close, yeah. but is it close enough? That's it. <laughs> and, and, and if you're wanting to make adjustments for individual cars, for people they might want bespoke features yeah then we have to, to modify that to suit so we can you know we did one recently for a, for a quite well-known guy and he, he was just a bit bigger than perhaps yeah. you would normally have in a Porsche 911 so we had to modify all this so the seats could go further back okay. we had wider seats we made wider seats for him yeah so it's yeah we can personalize the car but keeping the overall aesthetic so by doing it that way it allows us to tailor to the client's needs and if they want to add things to the dashboard for example like we've done them with integrated phones you know or navs or whatever we can, we can do all of that we can make things fit in and make them look like they should be there so the one thing we haven't discussed so much is a suspension so we <clears throat> we just literally went to the porsche motorsport catalog yeah. uh, and, and had a very expensive trip there and bought everything <laughs> um, uh, so that's all adjustable as it would be on, a, on an rs and yeah. um, but the we, we looked at various straightforward dampers like the KWs, the Olins, and they're great dampers. Yeah. I'll, you know, I'll stand here and say they are brilliant dampers. But I drove a 964 with something called Tractive fitted to it. I've come across them. Yeah. And I thought, right, okay, 
I can really, it was a well set up car, um, Steve Bennett's car, and it really made it, it was a game changer. Yeah. So I thought, right, we're gonna, we're gonna do that to this car. So there was a, a reversal. Now in practice, we... And is that an active setup? Yeah, it's a fully yeah. active setup, but it's not a plug in and play. I mean, we've been to, you know, we've had quite a bit of agony with it. Yeah. Uh, we fitted it, we, we had some fitting issues to start with. I think we're the first 993 to, to have it fitted, or certainly were when, when, it, when it was um, happening. And it, it wasn't quite straightforward. So it, we, we were struggling with it to start with, to yeah. be honest, it, it didn't feel great. <laughs> and it was, only, it was only the fact that we'd persevered because of so many uh, adjustments yeah. to be made yeah, and so, yeah. so many permutations. Normally you have a screen on the dashboard that you can adjust on the move and whatever, it's, it's that good. Uh, we didn't want that. Yeah. This isn't that car. You want to set it and forget, can't yeah. you? Yeah, and so we have a we have a little knob down here. Oh, okay. And yep. we've got again aluminium, and we've got five presets. Yep. So we've preset damper settings for the client from soft through to hard. Okay. Yeah. Now, if you don't, and and we spent a week with uh, Chris at Centra Gravity. Yeah. Um, just going, just driving, developing yeah. over all sorts of roads, surfaces that we have in the UK to come up with um, the program that's in the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's 200% better than where we were okay, yeah. struggling with it at the start. So it's a great, it's a great s suspension system, but, but you, it you, needs to you, be done properly. It, you need to understand that the, the, the success to it, I believe, is, is knowing how to set it up properly. And the setups that you've gone for, do they, are they all reactive to a G sensor and stuff like that? As in, like, so the harder you corner, they possibly they pick up all yeah, all corners yeah. are working together. So, yeah. um, so it's quite soft for and compliant for just normal driving. Yeah, and then you you can just wind it on. Sweet. Um, and again, it's not a track car, so the the last setting is quite stiff for the road probably. But you might have it stiffer again if it was just going to be a track car. And and if you go to Switzerland or Germany or something like that. Super smooth roads, you can run it stiffer if yeah. you want. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, you can. And and if you didn't like our settings, you can change we, them. we can just change them. Yeah. It's, it's, it's that easy. Um, so this panel here is is where the bonnet pull would be. And I showed you this. Now we, we don't need this anymore uh, because it's remote off the yeah. uh, off the key ring there. But if all else fails, we have a we have an Allen key, a, a, a key under the seat, which is in, okay. in a little holder. Yeah. Uh, and you can still take the panel off and open and the bonnet. So if, if the bonnet's, if the battery's gone flat or you've locked something, locked your keys in there or something, yeah, yeah, yeah. you can still get to it as a safety. And these little panels here, Sam, so this is all leather. Yeah. And obviously there's an ability to scratch it and some people yeah. have to, but if it's your car, you should be able to just kick your feet over there, look. Right. And just, that's, that's it. That bit there. That bit there, yeah. it, that was the idea to, to try and save your car a bit, you know, because it's all leather and it, it can get marked. I think it's probably time. Start it up and, uh, and go for a bit of a drive. Yep, okay. Well, that was a great look around the car with Paul. His attention for detail is pretty, pretty significant. Uh, let's get in the car and go for a drive. Let's run a few gears. <laughs> 